Yep. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are listening to the Adam Friedland Show, uh, a very, I'd say, unspecial episode. Uh, we're kind of in a time crunch here. We've been working all day long, and Adam has made himself sick, uh, sick of me. He's, he's tired. He's got to go home and, and hang with his girlfriend. So what I did, because he wanted to do the episode tomorrow, I said, fuck it. Let's keep the advertisers happy. I'm going to go over to the stand. And the first comedian I see, I'm going to say, I'll give you 500 bucks to come do the Adam Friedland show. And I ran into Matthew Broussard. Oh, hey. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew Broussard to the Adam Friedland show. So you have, um, you've never, you have no idea what this is. I've listened to Come Town. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very good podcast. So. Oh, thanks. So, but are you familiar that Come Town is? Hold on. Just I might I might have to uh, I'm gonna switch my mic here. So why don't you you can continue saying that Cometown's good for like a thirty seconds while I Cometown is good, Cometown is great. I listen to Cometown every day. Yeah, maybe day. like more like personal. I wear Cometown condoms. Like something yeah. Uh, no, keep going. I like it. It's just it's free in a way I dream of being. It's funny. It's it's uh, what what uh, it's what people forgot comedy is, which is just it. Ugh, the word irreverent makes my my dick shrivel. But you know, when it's actually real, uh, it's great. That's just yeah, I'm a big fan to all you guys. And uh, you know, y'all talked shit on me once on one episode. Did we? Yeah, Did it we? was nice though. Is this working? Is that yeah. one working? No, this sounds like it's worse than the other one. Hello, hello. God damn it! I think all my cables are fucked up here. We talked shit on you on an episode. Yeah. What did that? Well, who said uh, that? I was I, going up against Zach and Miko on roast battle. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was. Uh, you just said you wanted me to lose, and uh, that's fair. Zach. So I said Zach, I, I wanted. I also to win? want Zach to win. Well, yeah, because Zach's Zach's got nothing in his life. Zach's got nothing in his life. <laughs> Zach's funny. You're, 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 you're the you're the you're the eighties bully guy. Yeah, yeah. And you're actually a good comic. You know, it's funny because I remember you moved to Austin. We were both just background. We're both Austin oh, yeah. guys. And you moved to... I'm just going to have to make this work because this thing is fucked up. This is, like, way quiet. I don't know what the fuck's going on with all my cables. I was gone. Adam did a huge episode mm -hmm. without me, which, you know, my ego aside, great. Smash hit. Everybody loves it. It's very funny. Um, oh, no. It's like but, he's doing a Beyonce thing. Yeah. Proving but, he doesn't need the Destiny's Children. Yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. But... Uh, but he, I knew he would fucking. He, he, he'd like. To, look at this. What's wrong? Oh, this looks like the fucking the back of a pretzel time. Yeah. Look what it he looks did. Looks like with an this underwear thing. drawer. Yeah. Those yeah. are really of thongs. Um, um, yeah, he made a, a mess of the wires, so all the mics are broken now. I guess so. Well, yeah. but uh, anyways, yeah. No. Sound I, quality doesn't matter. People don't care about sound quality. They do. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Um, and then also th with the old show, I would be like, "Fuck the quality. I don't really care." But with this, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm all about uh, uh, at, like uh, like absolution and negation, and I don't know what either of those words mean, but I don't know what they mean either. Yeah, the old show, I uh, I would you know, it's like low effort, fucking everything. The more high reward. The more yeah, the more it sucks, the better. And with this, it's like you know, balls to the wall. Go make sure it sounds good. Yeah. Make sure uh, you know I get my like fucking. My like neurological issues sorted before I hit fucking record, but uh, oh, you got good issues. Uh, I don't OCD? know. OCD? You yeah, could be OCD. No, I'm definitely not OCD. Yeah, not at all. People, it's funny if people have ever suggested that, and it's like I have like shit on my pants. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like what? I've been wearing the same clothes for like a fucking week. What do you mean my OCD? You get a lot done though, because I remember I saw yeah. you biking one time, and you had like you were fixing your car and like shipping T-shirts. I was like, that's a yeah. that's a man. Uh, well, it's, it's a real man. It's a busy. It's someone. It's it's somebody that, that just c stays busy instead of thinking about things. But the uh, uh, Austin. Yes, Austin. Yeah, I remember you moved to Austin sort of after me, and everyone be and Austin's like kind of a the the, the whole the, everyone was always like. The the vibe, but what I hated about Austin is like they were just like the, once you did comedy for a year there, you got brought into this like into the scene, mm -hmm. and then it was like they just had this shitty attitude to anyone that was new, like really toxic. It's, yeah, it's it's like that whole thing that's happened in well, the last ten years where the real bullies are the nerds. Yeah, no, it's funny because I remember everybody would be like Matthew Broussard, fuck this guy, and I was like, all right, I guess fuck this guy, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's my friend saying it. Yeah, and then it was like, oh no, you're actually like a good comic. So I appreciate that. But yeah, no, I watched him do it to a couple of people. 
Yeah, um, they just don't like. Yeah, they they love like low effort comedy. They mm-hmm. love at that time. There was like they had their ten minutes that only worked inside the perimeter. They couldn't perform at bar shows and and like right. Well, the, suburban yeah. or rural areas. Yeah, the Austin scene was kind of set up for like uh, people at the time. Because, uh, like, you know, like, people would get their contest set ready. Yeah. And then they would spend the entire year thinking about the funniest person in Austin contest. And it's like, don't you want to be, like, a good comic? Yeah. Shouldn't you be thinking about, like, writing more than 10 minutes of material and not trying to, like, hang out with the Comedy Central people? Yeah. In one time in April, and then you're just depressed for the rest of the year because you didn't get fucking... <laughs> The semifinals, at, yeah. Yeah, live at Gotham or fucking... Because they used to really hand shit to people in Austin. They really did. And it's, as a Houston comic, we were very angry about that. Yeah, well, it was funny because I remember moving to Austin and I would go to... I, I remember, you know, thinking, like, because Austin had this reputation as being a great comedy scene or whatever. And I kind of stayed in Austin. I remember the first time I went to Dallas, I was blown away at how fucking good the comedians in Dallas yeah. were. I mean, it was unreal. Like, Paul Varghese, fucking Mark Agee. Um, Arian, Ar- Arian, Arian Pure, what's his name? Uh, Aaron Arian, Ar- 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 yeah. yes, whatever it is. Uh, weird. Destiny Barr, uh, Tone Bell, right, uh, yeah. Nick Guerra, yeah, just so many strong, fun- yeah, Usama Siddiqui, yeah. really strong comics come out of there because they yeah. do like the bar shows, they go to places where it's kind of harder to do comedy, whereas the Austin comics were kind of coddled. Well, they would write jokes, they would write yeah. jokes, whereas in Austin, and people would start with like, uh, you know, like this is what I this is what I want to sound like, mm-hmm. and then I'll figure, I'll figure out joke the basics later. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I remember. And, that, yeah, not only were all the Dallas comics very funny, they were all jacked. All of them were like, <laughs> yeah, they were all just mad. I remember going to one show, and it's like, is everyone on this show a fucking firefighter? I don't understand why they're all <laughs> just massive just guys. Just people. Yeah. There's another thing about Austin that someone pointed out to me later was that there was an alt scene, mm-hmm. and there was the club, and the club booked the best alt comics. Mm-hmm. So there was no divide between alt and club. Yeah. So there was that real, that was their core click yeah. that got to, like, cast you aside. Yeah. Like, go in their little Facebook groups and be like, we're uh, we're n- nixing this person. Yeah. And usually alt and club are good because they check each other. Yeah. Because whenever you hang around doing comedy for a while, you get someone, some loser tagging along your group that you like, but you're not, no yeah. one will admit publicly they're a bad comic, and that's when the other group comes in. <laughs> like, I, th- I think it was just, it's a, it's, it's like a like a group. Uh, I mean, Austin suffered from getting that attention because you know, it, people want to go. It used to be Austin was a cool place. Yeah, it, you it know, really was like 15 years ago. So you know, they, people want the Comedy Central want to go hang out there. The fucking bookers for JFL want to go hang out there, and that's why Austin comics got booked for these things. It's not because they're better comics. It's just because the spotlight all, happened to yeah, land there. Yeah, it's because it's a cooler place to hang out than fucking Dallas. Yeah, you know, so Comedy Central is not going there. You spend but, much time in Houston? Uh, no, honestly, I don't think I've ever performed in Houston. It's a great fucking city. I'll be there. It's yeah. ugly. I'll and be it's there. Hot. In, I'll be there in like three weeks. Oh, where are you doing? It's Houston Improv. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's fucking. It's an awesome. The best food. Yeah. It's diverse. It's got mm. NASA, the world's biggest medical district. And uh, uh, one of it has yeah oh oh and oil, all the oil companies so you have like really educated people. No, I, never, I never understood that they sh- they launched the spaceships from Florida, but then Houston is like the mission control center. Yeah, I don't know. That's what they do. I mean, that's what Cape Canaveral's in Florida. Well, but you know why they do that, and then right? They go no, Houston. We have a problem. Yeah, you know why they launch from Florida? No, uh, closer to the water? equator has higher rotational velocity. Okay, if so they could do it out of Kenya, it would be well, the best place. Initially, you acted like you didn't even know that they were doing it in Florida, and then you have the exact no, reason why. I know why they do it in Florida. I have no idea why Houston's posted up at all. I, I oh. have no... Yeah. It's not like there's like many good schools around there. It's, it's got to like be... I, yeah, I guarantee you it's some like fucking bureaucratic federal government bullshit yeah. where... Or some oil baron. Yeah, There's Houston like had some bid with NASA, and then they had to fucking build the mission control center there or something. Yeah, George but you Bush. Know, that would fuck me up as a kid, is is because they go Houston, we have a problem, and you know they launch it in Florida. I'm like, well, who the fuck is Houston? I thought that was a guy. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't understand that it was like, oh, it's in a different. Also, no way it's Houston. It's probably like Katy or Umble. I doubt. I doubt the yeah. like NASA. I don't We're know. We're getting real in. deep into Texas stuff here. Fuck yeah! Let's switch to Tennessee. Yeah, so let's mix it up so people I, don't get too lost. I remember. I remember being. I was uh, when I was a call center guy. I had a fucking uh, I, like you know the, the, you talk to these fucking retards that live. They have dial up that live outside of Houston to help them with their their, Di- their dial up. I guess it was a call center. It was like a you know technical support for for that sounds like for, such for, hell. for for like free dial up companies. 
Yeah. For the place to be in the back of like guns and ammo, there'd be a fucking CD ROM that we get you on the internet. Jesus. Where how my I hear my mom call those people sometimes yeah. and I just feel so bad for well, the other person. Yeah, she's it's so it, stupid at that. It is the worst job in the world. I honestly I could not drink enough. I couldn't I'm gonna be blackout drunk and I'd be like, I can't stand being at work. Do they like do they berate you? Does it, I got I, I like I could probably I could probably the how drunk I got, I could probably get raped violently by a group of people. And it, obviously later it would cause massive amounts of trauma. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, I'd be like, whatever, I'm being fucking raped, you know? Yeah, it just feels Who cares? cozy. But that job, no. I'm like fucking looking at the clock. I'm like, maybe I'll just fucking clock out now. Maybe I just, I couldn't handle it. It sucked, Dick. But the... Uh, Did you do it, Trunk? What? Could you do it? Did you do yeah. it, Trunk? Well, I worked from home, so... Oh, nice. Yeah, well, I'd that start... was back before that was a thing. Yeah, no, they, they, you work for a while, you graduate to, to... And then, yeah, I would just start drinking at like 10 a.m. Jesus. And um, it was when I lived with Chris Cubis. In Austin? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I would take calls, and there would be guys from, like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, outside Houston. And there was a guy I was talking to one time, and he's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm in Conroe. Where are you at? Conroe. And I'm like, I'm in Austin. And he's like, Austin? <laughs> well, I feel bad for you. <laughs> and they act like it's... Yeah, yeah, I posted a video about Austin. Like I'm, yeah, I'm just like in a trans bathroom. A <laughs> yeah, giant, right. Yeah. They're like, Austin's a sh- liberal shithole fucking welfare yeah. state. It's not Texas. Yeah. Now, now it's the Bay. Now it sucks for different reasons. And very different reasons. It sucked, yeah. it sucked in a lot of different I, ways. Well, you know, it's, it's funny that those guys ended up being right about Austin. That it was that it turned. Well, now what Austin is now is what they always like. We're like, oh, that's what Austin. It's is. it's a bunch of me's. It's a bunch of dudes who look like me. A bunch of tech bros yeah. running around. They actually did take. They should have kept me out. You they know were what it right is? It's it's, a, it's rich Texas women with like their dad's oil face going yeah. to Equinox. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, like, just like women that look like Jeb Bush. Yeah, you know, that's always because I went to yeah went to a private school in Atlanta, and my parents always like told me. Uh, whenever I was like feeling like I didn't fit in, they were like, "You have to understand, these families have generational wealth. So it's 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 the richest guy marrying the prettiest girl, and then their kids are rich and pretty, and then their kids will uh, find the either either the richest guy or the prettiest girl, and they're just genetically better than you. It's 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 a it's a kennel club that you can't compete with. But every now and then, you're right. You'd see that old. Or whatever uh, plantation barren face on a young woman, yeah, and always bleach blonde hair. Is that better? That no, this thing is dead. I fucking killed the board. Um, yes, and well, they get inbred like Habsburgs or whatever. Yeah. So then they really start to look fucked up at a certain point. Yeah, they always talk about like poor people being mm-hmm. inbred. Rich people do it too. Yeah. Because they want to keep it in line. Well, rich rich women from generational wealth, they get that fucking like that like thin lipped kind of William F. Buckley mouth. Oh yeah, look like a bird. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a bird, more like you know like a little dinosaur or something, like a proto yeah. fucking bird. Yeah. You know, yeah. back when they were all flightless. Also, it's kind of unfair that we put inbreeding just on white people. I have this theory that white people are just Is so it? uptight about race that oh. we're afraid to assume. I figured out what the problem was. Oh, you found it? Yeah, I had a, I had a, a, a like the decibel cut on oh. this one. So. Just in time for my uh, racist theory. Let's hear it. The um, racist theory about why rich people do what? Now? No, why white people in inbreeding is such a oh that's what white people do. Mm-hmm. I'm like I think every race does that. I think white people are just afraid to ask uh, people of another race if they're related. Yeah. You know, we're like, I don't want to assume they're brother and sister because that'd be racist. Yeah. And then they get they just get away with incest. Yeah, you'd be, it's too. It's like, how do they not, how do they know, you know, because they all look so similar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you, do you have inbreeding in your family? I don't think so. I, I would do. imagine that I have inbreeding in my family. I don't even know, like. Probably. I mean, it's a, my grandparents were second cousins, I learned, at my grandma's funeral. They really? They at a reunion, yeah. That's crazy. And my dad's, well, those were the Jews. Mm-hmm. Those were like Jews from Lithuania who came over in the 20s. Yeah, Jews, to get yeah. away from the, you know. Why is it only stuff. the Lithuanian Jews that escaped? It seems like every Jew is either, they're like either Lithuanian mm-hmm. or Russian or like some kind of dog shit desert thing. Yeah. You know what uh, I mean? It'd be like a because guy all the other like the guy that's like I'm Jewish. It's like no, you're a cab driver. I don't you don't <laughs> the you know. oh the Sephardic. Yeah right. Oh that's yeah. It. Well, they never got as persecuted. They just stayed in the desert. Yeah. Like the Jews split up. A bunch of dudes went to 
Europe or mm. the Caucasus Mountains, and then they mostly bred with white people. So yeah. as long as the mother was Jewish, they stayed Jewish. It's so funny because if you weren't Jewish and you were saying all of these yeah. things, people would be like, this is the most racist. This is one of those like Richard Spencer guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you look like a fascist. I look very racist. Yeah, yeah, I look like an old money racist. Yeah. Yeah. Like the one who like organizes a rally but doesn't show up. Uh-huh. Um, they, uh, oh, yeah, Jews. So Jews inbred a lot because their population bottlenecks so much. Mm-hmm. And then Cajuns, which is my dad's side, apparently like 300 Cajuns originally. The so Cajuns were the French Canadians who were expelled from Acadia. So your dad's like a Cajun Jewish guy. He's not Jewish. Oh, he's okay. just straight trash Cajun. Oh, uh, but okay. he was like autistic and really good at chemistry. I was so. imagining like a Hasidic Jewish guy. And then it's like, how did then how is his son like the fucking like Gregory Marmalade? Ha. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't get that reference, but it's the bad guy from. Uh, uh, from what about Jefferson Darcy? Does that work? Gre- Marmalade is Marmalade fucking Revenge of the Nerds or Animal House? I oh, I get. I, I know the. Re- <laughs> Or, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Right. I can picture him. Yeah. Why the fuck can I remember that? See, this is what I mean by neurological problems. Yeah. How, how the fuck can I remember the name Gregory Marmalard, and I can't, I can't remember whether it's Animal House or Revenge of the Nerds. I remember all the lyrics to all of the theme songs from Greg, the yeah, cartoons it's, growing it's, up. It's I Animal can't House. Remember. Yeah. Greg Marmalard is the bad guy in Animal House. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like a surfer. I think I went on a Wikipedia binge on him. He was like a surfer who dropped out of college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, I look French, so I just got all my dad's French genes. But the so the, the Cajuns got kicked out of Louis uh, got kicked out of Acadia, and they all moved down to Louisiana. And apparently, there were like three hundred of them mm-hmm. originally, and now they've spawned hundreds of thousands. So like, there is if you go up my so family tree, you see broussards in every direction. So that is like uh, the, that is inbreeding. They're right? very inbred. Yeah, they're sort of the source. And not very healthy. Not very educated. Mm-hmm. And then Beyonce is a descendant of the broussard. There was, like, one Broussard who, like, led the rebellion, Joseph Broussard. Yeah. He was, like, our hero. And then, like, his great-great-great-great-granddaughter is Beyonce. So that's not a fun story wow. about why she's, yeah. So it's, it's technically illegal for you to fuck Beyonce. <laughs> because of? Because it's incest. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing holding me back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so whenever people are like, you know, would you fuck Beyonce? You're like, well, yeah, obviously we've oh, no. talked about uh, it. Yeah. But we're related. So Our I kids can't. would come out uh, beautiful. Yeah. And, and uh, do you think she's hot? Is she? A, would you fuck Beyonce? Yes, but That's I'm not weird. like I'm not like jaw dropped over her. You would think that your brain would be like, oh, gross, no, because mm. she's black. Cause, cause she no, because <laughs> you're racist. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, because you're related. No, because she's half white. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever part white. Now, no. do you think you're on the black side or the white side? What's that? Do you think you're on the black side or the white side? Of Beyonce's you gotta be history? careful with a black. But like, if you go, if I'm you go on the, the uh, I'm on the slave owner side. Right, exactly. Yeah. Go tell a black person I'm actually related to Beyonce. It's not fun. Yeah, and I do a bit on stage about how there's no famous Cajuns, mm. and I'm uh, except for like Ellen DeGeneres. I'm so afraid someone's gonna shout Beyonce. Mm. And we're like, yeah, that's a uh, yeah. I remember that reading, was a, I remember reading oh, a, a black girl one time, and like she was black. This girl mm-hmm. was dark. And uh, her last name was like De Gian Batista or something, and it was like it's wild to imagine like just like a, just a fucking wop slave owning family at some point in the past. Yeah, like, they're like, dude, you did the fucking spaghetti wrong. Yeah, how, the fu- how do you fuck? How do you fuck up a ragu? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, because, you know, they're... they're Why I oughta... The yeah. reason Italians are racist now is because they never got that. None of them actually. He doesn't slaves. use a whip. He whips off his Gucci belt and uses yeah. that instead. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, that's that's why they've maintained... I don't think any Italians actually owned... There were Jewish slave owners. I looked this up. I did a show hey, in Georgia. you got to tell me, pal. Yeah. I, know. I didn't know. Oh, really? I didn't know. I did a show in Georgia one time, and it was like a really Republican country club cloud, uh, crowd on the coast, and... Uh, political ideologies were up for clash, but I, it, the show went fine anyway. Mm. I talked about the, the South being anti-Semitic, and some guy comes up afterwards. He was like, uh, B- Benjamin Greenberg. I don't know if you know that. Na- I'm making that, but Benjamin Greenberg. I'm oh, like, I would that? love it. But he had an actual name of a Jewish slave owner. No, he had he had a name of the first Jewish senator, who was. Uh, uh, on the side of the Confederacy. Yeah. I'm like, hey, we're not proud of him. I'm going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and pretend that he was just preparing for Jeopardy, but had never watched the Beep. show. 
Yeah. Had no <laughs> idea what had no idea what kind of questions they somewhere. asked. Yeah. Racist Jews like, for I'll, 400. Katie, I'll come to dinner in a minute. <laughs> I'm memorizing all the Jew slave owners <laughs> so I can win Jeopardy and finally buy us a slave of our own. That's funny, man. The hey, I did thanks. a show, a park show during <laughs> the pandemic. Hey, thanks. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> Um, I did a park show during the pandemic, and uh, uh, I was like closing out this park show. It was going like decently well for a park show. Yeah, and I did. How 10 excited minutes. were those Shakespeare in the Park fags for coronavirus? They oh, finally, 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 they're like, "Oh, this is gonna come back." Yeah, I'm finally gonna be the next Robin Williams or whoever the fuck did that. It's dude. my time to shine. Because people like famous people, it sounds like started off at Shakespeare in the Park. I think. Yeah, but I bet during the pandemic, like Alec Baldwin was like, "Let me do it." That mm-hmm. was the thing. The, the pandemic, a bunch of people like lowered, like movie stars started doing TV shows, theater comics started doing clubs, so maybe they got edged out yeah. right away. Yeah, Tom Cruise had a job at Journeys. <laughs> He, had to, he got bumped all the way down there. Fuck, a tough guy yeah. with his size four shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, did this park show. I, I had done like 10 minutes, and uh, I, I was like, uh, I said, I'm Jewish. Any Jews in the audience? And a couple people raised their hand. I go, oh, you're Jewish, you're Jewish, you're Jewish, you're Jewish. Cool. And the last girl was black, and I'm like, it's Brooklyn. I'm not going to make anything out of it. And, she mm-hmm. was, and then as, as I started the joke, she goes, bet she didn't expect a black girl to be Jewish. I was like... Oh, cool. Which side? Mom's side, both sides? She was, was like, she Ethiopian? She was Ethiopian yeah. Jew. I'm like, oh, cool. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and I tried to start my set. She was like, you know, you're very racist. I was like, I didn't talk about race. She was like, yeah. white people can't be Jews. The only white people that are Jews were actually a group of, of, of white Caucasians. Oh, so she's like a, uh, she's like a, a Hebrew Israelite. Yeah. And she was spouting this whole thing about. Meanwhile, I guarantee you, the most racist white guy in the room was like, Preach. Preach. Fucking church, sister. Dude, the horseshoe spectrum is real. You go all the way to one extreme, they all sound alike. Right. And the funny part, she didn't even look Ethiopian. I guarantee you, you cannot find a single, like, Nazi. There is not a single far-right guy in the world Mm -hmm. who has anything but absolute love in his heart for the black Israelites. Dude. There's not a single one that's like, fuck these guys. They all love them. You know who David Duke is? Yeah. So the guy before him with that role? Mm-hmm. Benjamin Greenspan. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Is that a Jew? <laughs> yeah, whatever his No, I guess was. he can't be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're calling back. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Uh, he he said about the, the black Israelites, like, oh, yeah, they're the black version of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That yeah, basically. Guy. It's so great. My brother doesn't, he saw them on a corner one time. He was like, oh, like other Jews. And he started talking to him. He was like, oh, this is a weird corruption of like eugenic yeah. Racial purity. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's odd. It's hilarious. But I mean, I respect them because they're trolls. Yeah. You that's know? that's all they are. Um, I yeah. gotta do I gotta do a little ad read real here. Oh hell yeah. Real quick here. Today's episode is brought to you by my bookie. Mybookie.ag. And so the can are you an NFL guy? Sure. Are you? No. Oh damn. I was gonna ask you. I don't give a fuck about anything anymore. So I don't like uh college ball for me. Yeah, the campaign. Well, I guess you can bet on that. So if yeah, if there's if there's big get, what are you betting on? You bet? Uh, I'll bet on Alabama just for safety. Okay, well you can bet on Alabama at mybookie.ag, and so here's the copy. I'll just read the copy. Jo- Sorry, Joey. If Adam were here, he'd put a little more uh, a little more ass bone into this. While the Chargers slash Chiefs prepare for a battle of the AFC West on Thursday night, prepare your winning season at mybookie.ag. Some like to bet to earn and some bet to make the season more exciting. Either way, mybookie gives you the most for your money with a double deposit bonus. It's quick and easy. A $250 deposit puts $500 in your account instantly, and you can use your funds to bet on as many games, contests, and props as you want. To claim your bonus, register today and use promo code either Comtown or Comtown20 or I think maybe the Adam Friedland Show or TAFS20 or the Adam Friedland Show 20. I forget. And me and Joey had a conversation, I guess, about changing the promo code. I can't. Uh, it's one of those. And I don't know if we settle on anything. So do that, and it's designed to add more excitement to the games and sports you love. That's promo code, whatever it is, to double your money up to 1000 bucks with my bookie. It's only week two of the NFL season, which means there's still plenty of time to get in on the action. Don't miss out. Begin your winning season today exclusively at my bookie. Uh, so, yeah, what are you betting on? I'm betting on Alabama. 
Alabama. SEC all the way. Now, is that based on your personal, like, emotional connection to Alabama, or do you I've, think they're uh, a better team to win? I just think they're the best team. Oh, okay. Because it's all they do down there. I'm is from, win. Yeah, it's football. Yeah. You know, SEC, that's their... They breed for it. They yeah. you know, select for it. But Alabama isn't the only school in the South. No, but it's like they have nothing else going. Like mm-hmm. Georgia has like technology and film, and Florida has tourism, and Alabama, they got. Well, they have NASA. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I remember stopping at a gas station in, in Alabama. It could have been Mississippi, but I'm pretty sure it was Alabama. And I've spent very limited time in Alabama. Yeah. And I was in there, and it w- I was like, is this, Eng- is this the English language? The people are speaking. Yeah. Which is worse, Mississippi or Alabama? I think they're both kind of on par. They're the same shape. They're just like one. It's like New Hampshire and Vermont. Yeah. Wow. It's like they're the fuck. They just wed. They're like, ah, this is two things. Yeah. I haven't done comedy. I've, I've, like, there's only six states I haven't done comedy in, and those are the last two. Vermont. Or those are two of them. No, uh, Mississippi and Alabama I haven't performed oh, in. Okay. I performed in Mississippi. I actually had a great time in Mississippi. Yeah. yeah. I figure the cities in those places are really cool. Like, some of the coolest cities you ever go to are, like, like blue little bubbles mm-hmm. in red states because they feel like they have to, like, make up for yeah. everything going around them. Is that West Virginia? I don't, I don't know. know. I, think, I think a lot of them suck, actually. Like, I heard, uh, what, what is it, Mobile? Is that the big city? Mobile. Yeah. yeah. Huntsville, Mobile. I, I was told that is a sh- absolute shithole. Uh, Biloxi, oh yeah, sucks dick. Apparently, that's where my f- my family's from, Alabama. So half my mom's side. It's a came. shame because Biloxi is a great name. Yeah, it is. They you got know? fun names down there. All the yeah. uh, Native Americans they wiped out. They but they have stuff f- after them. more fun names because Jersey's got a lot of Native American. Jersey's some of the names in that fucking state are absolutely retarded. Like what? Like Mawa or Rahway or Hoo Hoo Koo Hoo Hoo Koo. Isn't there one? There's a Jersey town that's like who, 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 who It's like ho ho coon. Well, they're something. like a mix in New Jersey. It's like either like Westminstershire, uh, or like Macomawak. There's a the Midwest has a lot of Native American si- named cities, and they're very white. Uh, Waukesha. That was Waukesha when I went there one time. Who who coon? I think is. I think. Oh God damn it! New Jersey. Let me do. It's like ho ho. New Jersey. Wait, is Hoboken? Hoboken's probably also... Uh, Connecticut's Native oh, American. Ho- Ho-Ho-Coos? Yeah. Ho-Ho-Coos? Ho-Ho-Coos? Is that... Oh, yeah, because a lot of the AUKUS, Secaucus. Yeah, but it's it's spelled H-O-H-O-K-U-S. That's really dumb. Yeah, Ho-Ho-Coos. Ho-Ho-Coos. Yeah. But yeah, like, but Secaucus, that's another dumb one. Those are like really what they consider a city in the Northeast is so much smaller yeah. than what they consider a city in the South. Mm-hmm. Like Mobile is like, you know, you just drive through little towns in New Jersey. There's so many little ones in Alabama. Mm. What's the worst state? The worst state in the world? In America. Um, <sighs> hard to say. I mean, I, I know Florida gets a lot of shit, but Florida's Florida got has beaches a lot of good and, things. Yeah, yeah, Florida's got a lot of good stuff. And a, b- a big problem with Florida is that they have like some open blotter, police blotter thing. Yeah. That's where Florida Man comes from. It's, it's not that they have more crime; it's just that they're allowed to oh, publish okay. anything, supposedly. Oh, yeah. Damn, you got a lot of Florida facts. Yeah, my. Uh, that's like weird. I shit, feel like though. I feel like a, like a compulsive liar because I have like claims to so many states. But yeah. My brother went to Florida. My aunt and uncle. But and I, I know Florida. a lot of people that live in a lot of states. And yeah. I'm, I'm not like yeah. It's actually the, the because it's closer to the equator. The tidal winds. Like I don't know that kind oh, of yeah. shit about. Well, I have like no social skills in my brain, so I have a lot oh, of room yeah. for unimportant facts. So right it's, right. it's nice. So what were you, what were you saying? What do you think the worst state is? West Virginia seems up there. No, see. Oh, I disagree with you there. Okay, West Virginia is top five. West Virginia is people or the place? people. The people are nice, but okay. yeah, the, the the as a place, it's it's very poor, but it's like yeah. it's, it's a beautiful state. There's like a lot of good music comes out of there, like a lot of bluegrass and like country. They write about West Virginia. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Then I put Alabama, Mississippi. Probably the there. most the most famous, and I've told this I've told this anecdote on the show a billion times, but the John Denver song, not really uh, particularly. It's probably the most p- famous like cultural touchstone as far as related to West Virginia and they love Take it. me home? Yes, Country yeah. Roads. And Wait, was West Virginia when the one that like sat out of the Civil War? Um That's why they I think they were just it was just a part of Virginia during the Civil War. There was no West Virginia yet. Oh, I thought the Civil War created West Virginia or something like Maybe that. Maybe something like that. Which is weird cuz I would imagine West Virginia is now more racist than Virginia. 
Um, is it? I don't think it's more racist. Look up the most racist states. Yeah, it's just it's uh, it's just very poor. Um, but no, I I I I I adore West Virginia. I think yeah, Mississippi, Alabama though, worst ones. The worst states, you think? I think so. They rank pretty low. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll I'll, I'll defend. How much time have you spent in West Virginia? Oh, I just drove through. I'm fascinated by it. I really want to go there. Yeah, but it's, it was really, just, it's really pretty. I think I went to Wheeling, and it was just, like, just so poor. Like, there were, mm-hmm. like, empty buildings on the river. Yeah, front. it's very sad. I mean, like, the, the level of poverty there. I mean, like, West Virginia has towns where, you know, I mean, it's, like, similar. Like, you know, people talk about, like, Flint, but there's, there's oh. plenty of places in West Virginia where they just don't have, you can't, like, just, you can't drink the water. They just don't have. Really? It. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a ballad of uh, Billy the Kid. That's a Billy Joel song from mm-hmm. a town known as Wheeling, West Virginia, is the opening lyric. So that's he a, writes a lot about. He kind of just shits on places. Yeah, he does that. He shits on women and places, and like, he just gets a pass for it. And or then the people there love it. I mean, like you know, Allentown, famously. Yeah, when you're not shouting out. Is, yeah, he's like, "Fuck Allentown. This place sucks, dick, and no one has a fucking job, and everyone yeah. wants to kill themselves." It used to be cool. Maybe back during the fucking during World War II when the only other thing going on was the fucking Holocaust. But other than that, this place <laughs> sucks. And then he plays that song in Allentown, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, fuck us, yeah. you know, fuck this fucking town." Just acknowledge us, please. Yeah, yeah. And it's weird because only a couple, you know, like artists get to do that. And it's weird because the Billy Joel is largely seen as sort of like. A, I feel he's like he's in a, a very earnest, guy. yeah, very earnest, very like you know, kind of like accessible, feel good kind of music, and uh, and yeah, he just shits, he just shits on places and people. Yeah, he's very cynical about people. When you're not from a big town, though, you're just happy because I grew up. I spent ten years in Corpus Christi. Yeah, and I was just happy to hear the name, even if people were shitting on it. I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. people acknowledge our existence. That's yeah. kind of a that place could be better. Yeah, so you, you have, you're from Corpus Christi just, like, your entire childhood, you know? Uh, ages 3 to 13, and then Georgia. Oh, weird. That's, yeah, I didn't know that. Corpus is, that's like a, that's like a weird place to be from. It's a weird place to be from. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't make it out. It's, mm-hmm. like, just cozy. It's just enough of, a, like, they think they're a city yeah. until you leave. Like, I didn't know. It's barely a fucking, I thought it was supposed to be a beach town, and it's barely. It's the really ugliest. It's on the bay, and the bay is all, like, gulf oil. The water is dark green. It's the color of the wall. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't seem to progress. Yeah. It's, it has one airport that flies to Houston and Dallas. That's it. Uh-huh. Um, and it's 300,000 people. They got Selena. They got well, Selena was born. S- S- Selena. They got Selena a wasn't born there. She was killed there. They got a two-story Whataburger. Oh, yeah. That's a That's big thing. That's near the statue of Selena. They also have, um, they also have, uh, uh, oh, no, it's not even important. I just did a show there, and they had an Outback Steakhouse. I went yeah, we were really excited when we got a Cracker Barrel. That was a big fucking deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember going. I remember at that Outback Steaks house getting the Bloomin' Onion, and then also the Bloomin' Onion, the Bloomin' Burger. What is that? What the, what's that like? Bloomin' they Onion. They put on the it? Bloomin' Onion on a burger, basically. You You're a healthy guy. At the time, I mean, I was. That, that was those. Those were. Uh, I was just. I was doing. I was like hosting for Lucas Melendez, and then fucking Bryson was featuring. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I kind of just went along for the ride, and then had to sleep in the floor of the hotel room after. After getting trashed all night at the show, I don't even remember the show. Yeah, that was <laughs> those were gay times. <laughs> doing. Stuff. I don't know if it was Corpus. It might have been you that that yeah. <laughs> soured your picture of Corpus. No, nah, well, maybe. I mean, it was like I, the, you know, I mean, I would have gotten drunk anywhere, but yeah, it's like this. It's like you know, we get there. You know, you like in your head, you're like, yeah, I'm a comic and I'm on the road, and then you're like, this is a this is the shittiest bar show. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, even I wouldn't do this if it was in the town I lived in. I did yeah. that in, in Houston. We would go on runs. Yeah. I never got to do them, but they did the Valley. They would do like the border, like run along the border and do shows there, and that was hell shows. I did Paris, Texas once. Great movie. Yeah. 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 So my girlfriend's parents got married, I think. To that movie? To that movie. They got married yeah. to that movie? I don't movie? know the movie Paris, Texas. Is it's it? weird that people don't get married to things, you know? They fuck two things, but nobody marries two things. Yeah, they always said, you know, with gay marriage, like, we're worried people are going to start marrying their horses. I was like, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. You could list it as dependent. Um, do you think that, that, do you think we're headed that way? Do you think people will marry their horses? I don't know, man. It's gotten, like, that whole... <laughs> 
I support gay marriage. I support all those things. But it's crazy how much it's escalated mm -hmm. since the... Uh, I guess my biggest fear is like people being able to identify as more than one person. I'm not saying like non-binary. What I don't give a fuck about that. But like yeah. someone's gonna be like, I get to count myself twice on this on this voter form or something. Like I'm afraid we're gonna because the the like the fundamental notion is the idea of the individual. Every one of us is one person. That's the only thing we can really count. You can't you, mm. your soul can't be two things. But what if like someone's just like, no, I call myself two people, and I'm going to be married to myself because we're two different people. And y your fear in that is that it'll fuck up the census. Yeah, I like math. Oh, okay. I really like math, and I hate when people do stuff that fucks with math. That might be more fascist than just being like, yeah, blacks are a lesser race. Yeah, to, to I, be, I will so do a lot of horrible things in the name of good data. You know who else who liked math is, is the people that built the adding machines that counted up all the Jews during the Holocaust, who were probably, those are worse people. Yeah, but it was yeah. probably, they probably got Jews to do it. Yeah. <laughs> against other Jews, which made them even worse. Yeah. They weren't just Germans who loved their job, they were Jews. You can always find a backstabber in any group. Yeah, I bet there were. Yeah. I wonder if there were Jews that played ball in the Holocaust, and they were like, we'll, get, we'll, get, you, we'll get you a sweet... Sweet deal out of oh, this. Oh, I thought you meant, like, was there a basketball team at Auschwitz? Oh, I... Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's what it... When you <laughs> said that, good I, ups. I forgot that played ball is an expression. Oh, play ball. Oh, yeah, like yeah. when... Yeah, like crooked yeah. politicians. Yeah, I was imagining, like, a really shitty movie about, like, a... Like an upstart kind of... They're like, yeah, we may be in the death camp, but that doesn't mean we can't be the best damn... Yeah, the Auschwitz Bobcats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, like, slap shot, but with... <laughs> the Holocaust basketball. They're like, look, we're all gonna fucking die. We might as well be the most violent basketball team. Oh yeah, fucking in throwing elbows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You ever see that movie Slapshot? No. Great movie. God, I don't know any of your references today. Oh uh, well, the Holocaust was. Uh, there was six million Jews. They but killed. that didn't happen, right? Uh, it's disputed. I, I, I mean, I think it happened personally. Personally, okay. yeah. Personally, I believe, I believe in the Holocaust, but I also still believe in Santa. So. You know, so the Holocaust is as real as Santa. Yeah, yeah. Famous, famous last words. What? Why? What happens? Do you die after you say that? Um, the ho if you say that three times, the Holocaust happens again. Interesting. So it's like a, a candy man. What's it? Candy man or is it Bloody candy Mary? Man. What was the blood? You remember Bloody Mary? No, what was Bloody Mary? I don't know. Was candy like man was you say three times. Yeah. We said it twice, so we shouldn't say it again. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it was a Bloody Mary. His girls would be like, if you say Bloody Mary in the bathroom three times, the lights go out and a mirror fills with blood. It's like, shut up, you dumb bitch. That's yeah, not that's what happens. One of those dumb superstitions. It's like astrology. The women stay believing that shit. you think they'd stop, but they continue with that throughout their whole lives. Are you superstitious? No. No? No. I do one thing. I judge people who are superstitious, but I say I rabbit, rabbit. I don't, even, I don't even believe in, like, actual provable causality. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm so the same way. I don't have. I can't be like, oh, if I, if I carry this, yeah, if I carry this lucky totem, something will happen. I don't even believe. I don't believe it. I I like, oh, if I drink and drive, something bad will happen. Even though yes. it's, it's demonstrably true that something bad will eventually happen. Or you're more likely, but uh, to me, no, nah. no. So how could I be superstitious? I believe that. I like think I think I can continue. I think I can smoke cigarettes for 20 years, and if I quit now, that it's like, well, you only get cancer if you smoke. Dude. Until you get cancer. Have I told you about these? What is that? Zin? Zin. It's yeah. nicotine, non-tobacco nicotine pouches. So it's like snooze, but there's no tobacco. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, very addictive. I don't recommend getting started. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I just bought these at a gas station one day. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to quit three times now. And um, they don't know. They don't know if it's bad for you. Right now, there's no proof that it is bad for you. But I also yeah. understand that those industries will spend a lot of money to hide that information. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am the guinea pig. I am yeah. the experiment. Well, that's why, like the vaping stuff. Like they didn't. They didn't think the internet was going to be bad for people. Now that's like it's it maybe the worst one. Yeah. Like looking at social media now. Like this is. Have you seen the stuff that got released with like the whistleblower? The what with the Google whistleblower, the guy that the dresses like fucking Willy Wonka and the kid that he turned into a blueberry. What's that, that fucking guy? The guy that was oh no, the fucking the guy that was like uh, oh Google made an AI that's real, and everyone was like talking about it seriously for a week, and then a picture of the guy came out, and everyone just stopped talking about. Oh it. yeah, that was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I'm not worried about AI because even if AI gets really smart, it doesn't have motivation. Yeah. Well, way. So what were you talking about? So Instagram, someone at Instagram like released internal documents. Maybe it was Facebook of mm -hmm. like they knew the addictiveness of it. They knew that 
uh, that they only make money off of clicks and views. There's no quality control. Yeah. So if you make things as upsetting as possible, people can't log off. And if they get yeah. angry enough, they leave comments. And if they leave comments, they see more ads. They knew all of this and they acted off of it, which is, you know, not surprising. But just to see them explicitly say this in their internal memos, you're like, oh, you're as bad as the cigarette companies. You're as bad as, uh, I, I also think like junk food companies will hopefully we'll one day look at them as being as evil as as you know, tobacco was, as the global warming denying oil companies are. You think that it will look at the social media or the internet as a whole? Um, social media more, because you can, YouTube can be good. Yeah. You can find good shit on YouTube. But that is social media. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I what lost. would be what would be the bad internet that's not social media? I almost forgot. Today's episode is also brought to us by Super Speciosa, which uh, hopefully that's still their fucking name. Cause they change the name in a lot. Super Speciosa is a kratom website. You go to superspeciosa.com where they offer lab tests since 2016. They've been perfecting certifiably reliable ways to bring your kratom as it was intended intended, unadulterated, untouched, uncompromised. And uh, they got, look, if you, if you've had, have you ever had Kratom? No, is it fun? Uh, no. I'm down to try. Uh, we'll, we'll say this. It's not fun, but it works. What is it supposed to do? It's like a, I don't know, it's some weird like jungle drug that fucking like poachers chew. Mm. But then some, some fucking... I'm assuming a tech guy figured out that you could import it. And so now there's all these Kratom companies, and they, they dry it out. They give it to you. It's like a powder. It's like a dirt, oh. basically. Does it make you trip? Does it make you energetic? Does it make you chill? It's, it's uh, and, I, and I don't know if you're supposed to say this, but because I think they've explicitly told me not to, but it, it feels like uh, taking a Percocet and having a cup of coffee. That sounds nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's mellow. It's really pleasant. It's mellow. Um, some people have said that it, it makes them nauseous, but... I kind of associate that nausea with taking painkillers. Mm. So it's like a familiar, I'm like, oh, I'm nauseous. That means this is working. Yeah. Um, like when I take acid, I get jittery and cold. I'm like, ooh, it's about to get fun. Yeah. 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 So uh, since 2016, they've been perfecting certifiably reliable ways to bring you Kratom as it was intended. I already read that part. They got a yellow one. That's the white mang da. White mang da. That sounds kind of... Um, Sounds like a city in New Jersey. Well, yeah, <laughs> yes. Now it's yes. my turn to say very. That's very funny. Instead of laughing, <laughs> uh, yeah, white white man die. But it's, you know, it sounds like an Asian guy being like, "White man die." Oh yeah, yeah it sounds yeah. like a character that a white white man die. Yeah, 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 right. That would get him in trouble now. They got the red Bali and they've got the green Malay, and so you can get all of these as a powder if you're, you know, like uh, if you're a. Uh, Let's call it a more enthusiastic user. Mm -hmm. You can do the move where you take fucking four giant tea tablespoons and dump them in the fucking cup and swirl around. They only recommend oh. taking a much smaller amount. But is it a drink? It's yeah, powder? You, yeah, you drink it. Coffee. They also come with capsules and like these little tabs that are just the powder pressed into like a Smarties, basically. Well, Nick, you sold me. Yeah, I think. Uh, the fucking the the p capsules. Those uh. You know, um, those might those are a little more convenient if you don't like the taste necessarily. Mm -hmm. That's the way to go. Now, uh, you get twenty percent off your first order. Uh, I think just by clicking here, but they have some special order uh, by if you use promo code Cometown or Cometown twenty, you can figure it out. You can order Super Speciosa and get some kind of discount. I forget what it is exactly, but it is good. Uh, and this is from the American Kratom Association qualified vendor. I have no idea what that is either. Oh, yeah. American Kratom Association, but it meets their standards. So if these were, if it was a collection of people so dedicated to whatever this fucking shit is that they formed a kennel club, basically. And they sit around taste testing it. Yeah. Then, uh, then you know, then you know it's, uh, they got high standards. So what was the shit we smoked in college because weed wasn't legal? I don't know. I didn't go to college and smoke no. stuff. Dude. You didn't? No. Yeah. Oh. Um, what do you mean, swag or K two? Maybe it was K two. Yeah. Is K two? It's not weed, but it was legal, and it was not weed legal for long. No, I was just gonna bring salvia. This, yeah, I was gonna bring this up when I moved to Texas, 
it was only a thing that I had never seen it until I moved down there. But I was blown away. You can get an ounce of like shitty weed for like sixty dollars in Texas, which is, had been a thing I had never seen. So maybe is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking no. about something that's not I'm talking even about weed? salvia? Oh, okay, yeah. Which you could buy at gas stations, and it oh. was highly unregulated. Could you buy salvia at gas stations? I thought you it could w- buy it. So it was I, more legal. I've actually never done salvia, but I was under the impression it was like you know, it was uh, you take a hit and then you hold it and then you like you're gone. You like lose consciousness. Yeah, it's like way more intense than weed. Yeah, but very short. I think. Yeah. What's the What's the one that you smoke and you get high for a minute and it's like super trippy? Uh, DMT. Yeah, yeah, that's fun. Do you still do? You, do you avoid drugs no, now? Yeah, all of that, like, like really hallucinatory or psychoactive shit. Like, really, I have no interest in doing any of that. You just not. You don't have fun with it. No, really. The only since I quit drinking ten years ago, the only thing I would do is cocaine, and then I kind of went off the rails last year, and then um, as of February, I haven't done any cocaine. But last I, last year, I was doing it like fucking every other day for. It's expensive. I was just around, dude. I, th- I think cumulatively in 2021, I probably spent like $500 on cocaine. That's not much. Yeah, it's just it was just con- it was just fucking constantly around. Jesus. Yeah, it was all over the city, dude. Like everyone, you know, it's, it's making a comeback. Yeah, I mean, especially it seemed like when people found out there was fentanyl in it, that people started doing it more. Yeah, it's, it's scary, dude. It's yeah, a lot of w- it was funny because like going and I've like made this point, but going into the pandemic. Like, you know, if you're like, you're like, uh, I felt like, look, you shut the economy down, you take people out of work, they're going to be home, like drug deaths are going to go up. And it's not my like, I had the four, you know, like people mm-hmm. predicted that, yeah, drug deaths are going to fucking go up. And you imagine drug deaths going up and you think like, yeah, the guy that lost his job at Walmart doing, you know, the fucking heroin out in the woods. Yeah, he's making $500 a week doing nothing. Yeah, and then I look around, like, me and all of my friends are just now fucking just drug addicts. Yeah. There's all these warnings about, like, oh, there's fentanyl in the Coke. There's There was a comedian's... I remember there was a... Like, a, remember some girl, like, three comics out in L.A., they died yes. from, like, fentanyl. And then I think I and was, like... in the Blowfish's house. Yeah, I think I yeah. went out and did drugs that night. It's like, you just don't... Like, I didn't even think about it, but... I don't fuck with cocaine. I have gotten more substance dependent, like in the last yeah. year or two. The the pan the pandemic was very weird, and it's like I, I don't, and I think a, a lot of the problem is that like nobody really made any kind of like good like pandemic art. Nobody's really done anything that really addresses like, on an emotional level, the sort of shared trauma of the last two years. And because it was this global thing that everyone was subjected to, everyone, no one was exempted from COVID. It was really horrible. It's yeah. like, and that's uh, it's kind of like you know, uh, certainly in 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 the scope of modernity, like unparalleled. There's you know, there, we haven't had like a global fucking plague like that, you know, so highly condensed. Regardless of like the, you know, like fatality rate of COVID or whatever, COVID was this global kind of shared trauma that affected everyone's life. And there's, because it affects everyone, there's no way to really think about, like, what is the impact of that on me? Yeah. Or as an individual, because, you know, it's like a, you know, it's like a fish in water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't notice. I mean, it, it took a toll on me. Yeah. Uh, I think that's why, I, part of why I started doing nicotine, uh, I started doing more acid. Though I don't think acid's a terrible thing. Mm. Um, uh, therapy became really popular. Yeah. I mean, a lot of little things have changed that I forgot. Like, therapy is, like, super popular now. It's the... Mm, I, I just I went to see a therapist ye- ye- uh, yesterday. First time? Yeah. Really? So, I mean, uh, here and there, I've gone. I've d- I've gone to a therapist for the quote unquote the first time, like th- maybe two or three times in my life. But I think I'm going to try and like just stick with it this time, mainly because it's like I'm so busy these days that I have to like outsource my introspection. I feel like I don't. I really do not have the time to sit around thinking about how I feel anymore. I do think happiness is based a lot around just being too distracted to analyze yourself. Too, I think self analysis. Over analysis is one thing, but uh, my my problem is that I'll like uh, like uh, and uh, I think I I don't know if I've said it, but I'll like uh, you know I just did I did helium in Philly, and that's like that's my favorite club. When I was like in my early twenties, going there, that was like such a such a big deal to to Mm -hmm. go. You know, I loved it. I had a great time. And, like, now I've, like, gotten back into stand-up. But now I can, like, sell out. And I have my own audience. I can go to Helium in Philly and sell out all the shows. And it's great to be back. And, like, wh- and those shows they were good. With the exception of, like, I feel like, you know, the late show Sunday, I didn't, I wasn't really hitting. But the rest of it, it was, like, fun. And it's, like, you know, I should be able to, be like, be, like, grateful and happy or whatever. And I'm not. 
And then your head is like, well, is it this? Am I like dissatisfied with this? Like, what is it? And the fact that I can't like pinpoint why I'm not able to enjoy this thing is like indicative of like, I don't, I really don't have a grasp on what I'm feeling at all. And in the last like two years, it's like, I've just let, you know, just one thing after another kind of pile up in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just fucking like, okay, either, you know, yeah, drugs or work or like, I'll just, you know, like just consume media or something. I've distracted myself too much. And so, yes, there's like, certainly you can spend too much time like fucking overanalyzing yourself or nasal gazing to the extent that you you like exacerbate fucking depression, but I really don't think that's my problem. Like, okay, yeah, that's my problem. I'm yeah, not busy yeah. enough. And yeah. I typically seem to, when I'm stressed or overworking, at least I'm not like depressive and, and being like, well, why can't you appreciate things? So mm -hmm. maybe I need to get... And you got to be careful too. If you do like, you know, creative work or whatever, and you try to, because I have friends that, you know, clearly they're depressed. Like my, my, my friend like came and helped like, you know, like work on this stuff. And I, you know, I don't know if he's depressed or not, but like you can tell when somebody's like stressed in their life and like, you know, some people turn to drugs or alcohol or some people just like bury themselves in work. And that can be like even more nefarious because it's like you can tell yourself like I'm making money, I'm being productive or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, OK, well, yeah, but you're like just not addressing your fucking mental health. You're sleeping like four days a week. You're causing problems in your interpersonal life because it's like, well, you can just say it's work. It's a sort of like noble pursuit. But even when like doing creative work, there's another poisonous aspect of it is like if you if I'm like fucking like, OK, the show, the Adam Friedland show, I'm going to put everything I can into this instead of like thinking about things and go 100 percent. I can work. I can work, 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 work and throw everything into it. But the second it's done, like each iteration of it or whatever, and I watch it back and it's like whatever feeling of escape working on the thing gave me. I'm not seeing it. It's not as funny as I want it to be. It's not like it's just a thing. It's just another thing. Then that like fucking kicks my legs out from under me even way, way more yeah. than like, you know, if like within where I started, because then it's like, oh, why? Well, you know, it's like this is fake, too. I might as well fucking, you know, go get fucked up or whatever. But yeah, th see, these are the reasons why. I do think I need to, like, you know, I just, at this point, I just have to, like, be, like, talking to somebody kind of regularly. Well, it sounds like you're a toxic mix of both, because my girlfriend is like you. She works too hard, and then she's tired and stressed, and the only way to cope with that is by working even harder. Yeah. Until she just spins out and crashes. Yeah, that's and I, I do that, yeah. And, well, she's, she's a creative to she does comedy but that's not her day job but like what you do is a mix of both because that's what i do is uh you know stand-up is my primary thing and yeah you can work and work and work on stand-up and it's still not good enough like for yeah. most jobs and tasks if you put in the proper work you have a product that is complete or yeah. near complete with creative work you can put a year into something and be like oh this is complete dog shit yeah. i hate this yeah um there's no completion well that's no that's what i mean and, and it's oh it'll always be that unless you're a shitty comic it'll always yeah. be that and then, but that's why with any creative work, regardless of what you do, you have to be very careful, like making it like this is, this is going to be the thing that has to make me happy or is a distraction from these negative feelings I have. Because you, even if you do, if you, even if you were happy in your personal life, you're never going to be fully satisfied with your work. No. So you're operating in a very dangerous place if you're fucking depressed and you're like, okay, I'll just throw myself at my, at my stand up. Yeah. Because the stand up's never going to be good enough. Never. It'll so, never be good. Yeah. yeah. Then you'll, yeah, like, you know, I mean, I'll just repeat myself at this point. And then you go on Instagram and you see people who are uh, way better than you'll ever be with more success and more money. And then you really hate what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That shit's a terrible cycle. I've never done. I've never really done therapy. Yeah, which I'm a big softy. I really should. I really should. But yeah, I just I need to I need to do something. I mean, it's like fucking because at a certain point it's fucking irresponsible. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like you know, like I have the resources. I can go do. Th like I don't want to be a fucking like burden to the people in my life or whatever because it's like my head's fucked up. Um, what do you do to the people in your life? Nothing. It's just you bum people out. If yeah, that's what I do. I'm yeah, just I just call and complain. Yeah. Even when things are when good things happen, I'll still be like, and I'm really annoyed about this aspect of it. And yeah. It takes people I love to be like, shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> yeah. That you're you're bragging, and yeah. that's your complaint. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like you know you should be able to like. You know, like, well, you should. I don't know. Maybe it's like, you know, like, OK, well, you're an adult. Put your fucking problems aside. But, you know, if like you if you can't do that and then it's coming out anyways, then it's like, you know, yeah, maybe I should maybe I should go find some kind of uh, resolution. Do you wish you had a job that you could just do and not care about? 
Like, I wish I had a job no, that could be... I wish I could no, be an engineer no, 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 sometimes or no, something. No, I, I want... What I wish is that I could have some kind of consistent appreciation for what I do have, which is, like... I, a I, lot. <laughs> I, am, I am grateful for it, but often, like, gratefulness is, like, sort of this, like, exercise, and it doesn't, like, it should come naturally. It's, like, it shouldn't... You shouldn't force yourself to, it should, like, you, you shouldn't have to do, like, a count your blessings sort of thing. I yeah. should be over the fucking moon that I'm in the position that I'm in. And it's mostly the fact that I'm, like, not that makes me feel like, well, what's wrong? Like, what the fuck is wrong that I can't, you know, and that's that's what I want to figure out. Because it's not, it's not just simple, like, you know, the necessary dissatisfaction you have with your work to continue, to make you continue working. It's not that. It's like there's, there's just, uh, it's just... Yeah, like other, there's something else. There's something else that 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 you know. It just makes it like, you know, like why, like why am I still? Why are there still days where I'm like, yeah, I should just kill myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, and and there's that. I, the more success I, I like, I look at success. I'm like, am I less happy the more successful I am? Which yeah. Is a really alarming thing. I don't think there's any relationship for me. I mean, it's like it's. I think it's just. You know, there's like there's other. You, you're always going to just be a person. Yeah. And you're going to have your natural own, cycles of discontentment. Own, yeah. yeah, sure. But your own like you know personal life and stuff. You know, it's like I don't think I don't think I would be any happier if I had a quote unquote like just job I could go to. Yeah. I'd probably be way worse. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what that would look like. I got I got into comedy so young that I don't I don't know how that would feel. I got into comedy young too, but I mean it didn't work out for a very long fucking time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, stand up was never the thing for me. You know, I mean, it's like I was, was like uh, very passionate about it, but either I lack like charisma or whatever. I mean, I could I could write jokes, but there was just something that didn't. Uh, I wasn't. I don't have whatever thing makes you, uh, you know, able to be like just a stand up. And then I got here and I started getting work writing and stuff. And then eventually, you know, the podcast. And oh yeah, we worked together on a show you were writing. Did we? Comedy Knockout? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were writing for that for a little while. Yeah, I didn't realize I feel like you were making more money off your podcast than off that job. Oh, yeah, that was just, that was actually a very fun job. Yeah, J.P. McDade. Yeah, that job was, I mean, it was so low stakes, and I didn't, I didn't, it's, like, I actually contributed almost fucking nothing, dude. Yeah. I I would just show up and hang out, and then you would prep comics, so then I would go down, like, half the people in the writer's room, I don't think, were comics, so it's like those of us that were. It's so weird to write jokes and not do stand up to me cuz like I would not know how to write jokes if I were not on stage testing everything to see if it was Yeah, funny. it's weird because like I I've met several comedians that have this like mindset that like oh comics are better writers and then you get in a writers room with people that are like are just those like uh machines? Well, the like the Ivy League comedy writer guys. Oh, the lampoon dudes. Yeah, maybe not necessarily the lampoon, but definitely the Ivy League guys that want to be comedy writers. And they're very normal people, mm-hmm. and then you see the work they produce, and you're like, "Oh, that this is why you're here." Like they're just oh. they they ju- they're just better at it. I mean, huh. to the ab- the absurdity of like you know thinking like, "Well, I'm a very good comedy writer. I could be a good stand up." This the, in the way that's not true. It's often not true that just because somebody's a good stand up, they know how to go write for a fucking TV show. I wrote for one show, and I was I get, I, I wrote for the roast of Alec Baldwin. I didn't get yeah. a single joke on. Yeah, I had some I was proud of, but it was it was a awful process and you were a writer a staff writer on the show or you wrote for one of the people on? i wrote the uh, for the show staff writer for the show oh, okay, one cool. week of Very whatever good. guild work yeah um we just sat in the room just typing silently we didn't work together really they would just yeah. say write jokes all day about whoever either 16 people yeah or whatever you know combinatorically this joke this person joke about this person by this person this yeah. person they didn't give us much assignments at first and every day at 10 a.m we would just read through all of the jokes we had all submitted out mm. loud and see what got a laugh, and it was not a very fun process. Yeah, I, when I ro- I worked on Moshe's show, and like they, I was there with uh, they, they they I remember they like would assign me they would have me and then Jess Dweck go write like a monologue, and then I would go like you know we go off separately, and I would just like write something so it looked like I did something for an hour. Right. I'm like I don't just type I, words. I'm like I literally have no idea how I got this job. Like yeah. I don't I don't know how to just sit here and write. Dude, how the Joke. fuck? I, I know can, I, I can bounce with someone. Here's the thing: I can sit around and be funny. Yeah, I haven't done it in the last hour, but I've, I can <laughs> I can do that, you know. But like to sit down and then Jess would come back, who's like the uh, polar opposite, where she just she's <laughs> Jess is very talented, extremely fucking good writer. She seems she stand up. I don't know if she does stand up. She just she just seems like just 
just off, just completely, you know, like, it's like, like, are you enjoying any moment of... Oh, like, just mechanical, m- militaristic. Yeah, kind yeah. of. But then, you know, you'd see her, right? I mean, she's just very fucking tight. Like, you know, they're just jokes. Like, so we'd be turn it in and it would almost be like, you, you know, in like The Simpsons with the fucking like uh, Lisa's friend who's like dad is rich and like she's like really smart and they're like, okay, uh, Michelle, time to play the anagram game. The, yeah. the fucking, the, uh, the, the Alec Guinness joke. Genuine class. Genuine class. And then and Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy's I mean, that's iron. how it felt. She's turning in genuine class and I'm struggling to relay a Simpsons joke that I've seen a billion times. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, writing jokes is like, writing jokes just for the sake of writing jokes is like the most miserable. Part. You just hate your, you instantly start hating yourself. You're like, mm-hmm. let's just try to think of something funny and you're, this voice in your head is just like, you suck. Yeah. The well, world's not fun. You got a heart out at nine, so I want to thank you for being here. Hey, thank um, you. Apologize to the, the fans of the show that had to sit through just uh, my meandering uh Talk about mental problems in West Virginia. But uh, Matthew Broussard, you saved the show. Thanks for coming hey, by. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks Tonight, for $500. You, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be in Texas, San Antonio, Austin, and Dallas in October. Tickets very, at Broussard.live. Very good. I will be at Indianapolis this Friday and Saturday at Helium Indy. Buy those tickets. Next week, I'm at Zany's Nashville. And then I think after that, the improv in Houston. Um, and as always, if you want to check it out, Adam worked very hard on it. He he put it, it uh, uh, went above and beyond and produced a, a very special episode of the Adam Friedland Show that you can check out that he did it this weekend on uh, patreon.com slash T-A-F-S for the Adam Friedland Show. It's patreon.com slash T-A-F-S. Thank you, guys. Good night. <laughs> I'm going to work all day. I'm riding down the bars. Take my lunch break. Take my lunch break.